All right, let's tackle the example questions for indirect proof by, uh, or proof by contradiction in algebra and geometry. Remember that what we're doing here is first assuming that the conclusion of our statement is false, and then trying to prove that that statement is true until we find a contradiction or something that can't possibly be correct about that statement, and then we'll have proved that the original statement must be. So let's take a look at our first one here. Uh, example A says, if x equals 2, then 3x minus 5 cannot be 10. We need to prove this statement is true by contradiction. So what we need to do is take our, our conclusion, our then part over here, and switch it around. Assume that the opposite of it is true, which would mean that we would be assuming that 3x minus 5 is equal to 10. So then our new statement would be if x equals 2, then 3x minus 5 does equal 10. So now we're, we're working with the opposite of our original statement. And if we can prove that this can't be the case, then we've proven that our original statement must be. So we'll go through and we'll go ahead and solve for x here. If we add 5 to both sides, 5 cancels here, and we get 3x equals 15. And divide both sides by 3, we get x equals 5. So since x equals 5, x can't possibly equal 2. That's a contradiction. So if saying that it's not equal to 10 is our original statement, and we've shown that saying that it is equal to 10 can't be true, then we're showing that our original statement must be correct. If x equals 2, then 3x minus 5 can't be 10 because x would have to be 5 in order for 3x minus 5 to be 10. So that original statement then is true, and we've proven it. Let's take a look at example B. Example B says, if triangle ABC is isosceles, then the measure of the base angles cannot be 92. So what we need to do then is change that statement so that it says, if triangle ABC is isosceles, then the bases are 92, equal 92 degrees. So if that's the case, then here's our triangle, and we have two sides, and our base angles here are 92 degrees each, which cannot be the case because 92 and 92 is greater than 180 without even looking at the third angle. We've already exceeded 180 degrees, which means this cannot be a triangle. So an isosceles triangle can't have bases that are equal to 92 degrees. Therefore, it must have bases that cannot be 92 degrees. And we've proven our original statement by contradiction. Now, finally, for example, C, our original statement is if angle A and angle B are complementary, remember that complementary means equal 90 degrees, then angle A must be less than or equal to 90 degrees by itself. We need to prove this by contradiction. So we change our statement to say the then part, then we change the then part to be the opposite, and our new statement becomes if angle A and angle B are complementary, then angle A is greater than or equal to 90. Oops, it's just greater than 90 because obviously if it's going to be the opposite, it can't have to equal to either. So we're saying then that in order for them to be complementary, A must be greater than 90. Well, since an angle can't be negative, angle B must be greater than or equal to 0 by definition. You can't have an angle that's inside out, right? Then if A plus B have to equal 90, which is what complementary means, A can't be greater than 90 because you'd have to subtract something from a number greater than 90 in order to get 90. So A, angle A, must be less than or equal to 90 
it can't be greater than or equal to 90 because then you wouldn't be able to add it to something else and get 90. So there we go.